Welcome back everybody. <laughs> oh, to the beach. A beautiful bay. I'm here with Brucey. Is Bruce? And I'm Tony. Hey, how are you doing? Ah, oh, and another overnight camp. Maybe with some rain. You never know. So I've got with me the North Face Wawona 4. Um, haven't tested it before, brand new, straight out of the pack. Haven't had a chance to look at it. I wanted to open it at home and test it first, just to make sure everything was there. And as some of you may know, I got COVID, couldn't do anything for a while. And today I'm free. You can hear I'm a bit croaky. I'm trying to save my voice, <clears throat> hence the quiet intro. I'm sure some of you will be happy that I saved my voice at the beginning as well. So I might not be talking as much. I might just be sitting, chilling, and just watching. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, pretty tired. It wasn't very harsh, Omicron. You know, I've had COVID before, the alpha type. That was way worse. This was not so bad. I got it off my son, and I'll explain all of that later. But right now, I just need to finish unpacking. Um, I've lit the thermocells, as you saw, there's a lot of sand flies, the midges that bite around here. Um, got my bedding out, got my comfy chair. I think what I need to do is go and get my fridge, bring that over with the power bank and hook that all up and bring you back then. Oh, pretty much all unpacked. So, need to plug the fridge in, got my massive Brass Monkey Fridge, and I've got with me a beast of a power bank. Uh, the good folks at EcoFlow actually approached me and asked me if I would test this, give a review of it, full disclosure. Um, they're sponsoring this as well. So the only reason I've accepted this, because as you know, I don't usually uh, review products unless I've bought it myself, is that on paper, this thing looks amazing and I really wanted it. <laughs> so this is the EcoFlow Delta Max and it is an absolute beast. Massive capacity. I'm gonna put all the details of it in the description, but I just wanted to show you. So uh, it's got a full control panel, turn it on with a whole gauge telling you how much power is left, how much is being used. Fast charge ports, USB-A ports, two 100 watt USB-C ports. And if you come around the back, pick you up here, show you around the back here. Just have to mind out for Brucey. We've got four, because this is New Zealand, and this is the New Zealand product, four ports. I think in the US, this is actually six ports, uh, AC ports, and uh, also 12 volt at the back here. Enable that and I can hear the fridges just come on. And then you can charge it here and you've got a fast charge and you've got a solar input as well. I am curious to see how well this thing does. I've got some big plans for this thing on this trip and uh, we're gonna put this through its paces. So if you look at, coming back around the front, we should be able to see, I don't know if you can see that. Let me just check and zoom in a bit. So it's showing current time it's 99% charge left 20 30 hours and it's drawing between anywhere between 42 and 60 70 watts so not much because the fridge doesn't draw that much but I'm just going to leave that running on this 12 12 volt cable here oh I am absolutely sweltering it is the beginning of autumn here. What I'm going to do actually is bring Bruce's dog bed out so you can sit on that. Hang on Brucey, let me bring it out for you. The nice people at Outdoor Connection donated this to Bruce, his own little dog bed that he loves. Let me put that somewhere comfy for him. Thank you for my kiss Bruce. There you go, that's your dog bed. Hey, oh, it's 
just so humid. It's got to be. <laughs> I know, I know. It's got to be 100% humidity. I'm, I'm, look, I'm sweating. It's disgusting. It's so gross. <laughs> and it's really flat light. Yeah, pretty grim. <laughs> it's just, I can't wait for winter. This is now the start of autumn here in New Zealand. And it is so humid. I just can't explain. It's probably because it chucked down with rain last night. Thank you, Brucey. You want a treat? Let me get a treat for Bruce. I know that's what he wants. Because he knows when we unpack, he usually gets something. So we've got some veal bones. Thank you again to everyone who's donated through Buy Me A Coffee. There you go. You're gonna go and take that somewhere. You can have it, it's yours. Good boy. Go on then. Oh, it's gonna take it away. Oh, you're gonna eat it right there on top of the cable. Uh, <laughs> I need to move the cable. I might actually for now put the fridge under the car. Hey, bring it over here, Brucey. Over here. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy. Let me just move the fridge because this is impractical having the cable draped across. There you go. That's better. Right. Oh. Do you know what I need? Oh, I need a beer. Now, it's not proper beer. It's a near beer. Batch brewing, all day, non-alcoholic beer. And before you sign off and say, oh, that's not a real beer, so why have it? As I said, I'm just getting over COVID. Cheers, everybody. Oh, it's so sticky. I can't believe how sticky it is. It's a good job I bought a bunch of change of clothes. It's okay. Tastes like a citrusy, citrusy IPA. Oh man. So, Here we are again. It's been a while. A lot's been going on. I think the last time I posted a video was over a month ago. And I know a lot of people have been asking, where are you? What's going on? And are you worried? You know, are you okay? And stuff like that. And I really appreciate all the lovely comments, all the questions. I've just been so busy. There's been so much going on personally. Um, had a lot to deal with, had a lot to deal with. So, but I'm here now. I'll explain later at cigar time <laughs> what's been going on. Um, but the COVID thing, I can explain now. So my son, we got a, a call from our son, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. And he said he wasn't feeling great. This was a week ago. He wasn't feeling too good. And he's at boarding school, about 90 minutes drive from where we live. So uh, I said to him, well, you've got to go and get a test, go and get a COVID test, because those are the rules. That's the, the rules of the school and here. And he said, oh, no, but I don't feel that bad now, actually. <laughs> I said, you're still going to go and get a test. So he went to go and get the test. And then I get a phone call from his housemaster. Uh, Brandon's positive. Sorry. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's fine. At this point, Brandon said he wasn't feeling so bad at all. So I said, are you okay to drive yourself home then? He's 17. And he said, yep, no problem. Okay. So he drove home. And then we get a call when he's about 15, 15 minutes from home. Dad, I can't keep my eyes open any longer. I'm so exhausted. I don't feel right. I feel shivery. 
I can't drive anymore, I can't focus. And we live, it's a very, very twisty road. It'd be very dangerous uh, if you weren't always aware of what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me, this is after effect of the COVID. So, uh, it's like, oh no, okay. So my wife, Anne, is on the vulnerable list because she has asthma, so she's fully vaccinated. I'm fully vaxxed as well, um, even though I've had COVID. And uh, I said to Anne, I said, okay, I'll tell you what, you drive me to him, I'll drive him home, I'll get COVID from him, uh, whatever, I'll look after him. You go and isolate in the separate area of the house. We have a completely separate area of the house uh, where you can come and go without coming or accessing the main house and you can be completely self-enclosed, cook your own food and stuff like that. So that's what we did. She drove me there, we get to the car, he's nowhere to be seen and he's actually in the car, fully reclined, fast asleep. He's exhausted, poor thing. So I drive him home, um, get him in the house, get him all tucked in and warmed up and everything and start looking after him. And Anne just goes and she's now doing her own thing. We prepared the room and everything for her to stay in it. Two days later, um, or two or three days later, I test positive. I felt something in the morning. I didn't feel quite right, just something with the throat. So I took the rapid antigen test and yeah, there you are, boom, positive. It's like, ah, well, we knew this was gonna happen. I'd been working out right up until that point. Even when uh, I was with Brandon there, I was hitting the gym hard. We've got a gym at home and I was hiking um, on my own land, uh, which goes up like, you know, 600 meters. So yeah, that's it basically. And then uh, it was like a mild flu for both myself and Brandon. He got it a little bit worse than I did, but not much. Uh, as I said, I've already had COVID. I had the alpha strain from the UK. That one hit me really hard for a couple of weeks and also gave me long COVID. That was, that was tough. Um, so I got this one and uh, yeah, just mild, very mild. Uh, just like a normal mild flu. So still a little bit sinusy, tiny bit of a cough, but other than that, absolutely fine. And uh, today I'm clear. And this was the first day I could come out. Uh, we have these isolation rules here in New Zealand where you're not allowed to mingle or do anything else. Whilst you've got COVID, you've got to isolate, blah, 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 blah. So I've done all of that. And um, I'm free. <laughs> Finally. So look, thank you everyone. Uh, can you see how drenched I am? Thank you everyone for all the lovely comments, all the questions. I've just been dealing with looking after Brandon, sorting things out. Um, it's just been nonstop. And um, I couldn't have even contemplated going camping. And before that, I will explain later why I hadn't been camping before that. Uh, probably we'll save that for cigar time later because it's pretty heavy and I don't want to get into heavy right now. So things I've got here on this camp, I've got my fridge, I've got my EcoFlow Delta Max battery, got my big comfy chair, got my Coleman bed, got my quilt, pillow and all my other gibbons and gubbins, got my thermocells cranking, I've got two of them. Bruce's outdoor connection dog bed. He's under the car eating that veal bone. He's having a great time. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is, I'm a little bit knackered from doing all of that, but that's just because I've just come out of doing nothing for a week. So it's a bit of a shock to the system. I tell you what, I'm loving the look of this tent so far. I have got a tarp with me. Before anybody asks, which you probably already have, I have got my tarp with me. Now, this is a bit of a notorious wind zone, but there's forecast no major winds. As I say that, the winds are just picking up a little bit. But it's okay. So you've seen me test the orange Wawona 6, which is quite a bit bigger than this. Yeah. This is the Wawona four. I don't know that I'd want four people in this tent. It's not that big. Three, two is definitely very comfortable. Very comfortable, two people in this tent. 
Yeah. There's also a door at the back where you can use it as a door um, with a mesh and cover and everything. So you have actually got two access, but if it's raining, then you've got to close that up completely and you can't use it. Plenty of ventilation. You can open the windows right up as well, uh, which I'm contemplating because it's so flipping humid that I just need as much air as possible. But with this wind, it's really nice. There's, what I do like about this tent is it overhangs at the front like this. So in light rain or rain, and there's no wind whatsoever, just vertical or coming from behind, to be honest, you wouldn't need a tarp. You could sit inside and so like my head now, even though I'm sitting outside, it's under the fly. So you could sit inside and be dry. Um, but I've got cooking that I want to do. So I will be setting the tarp up and probably need to do that before it rains. So let's do that now. Let's get the tarp set up. Just spent 10 minutes undoing all the cord. <laughs> Made a right mess. I forgot to deal with it last time when I was drying it out. But we're back. Okay, so I just want to put the tarp just behind this dent here. That'll be perfect. And then connect it to the car. So I've got my big spikes. just to stick to the front of the car, on the top of the car, like a suction cup with an attachment point on the end. And if I can get that on the top of the car, then I can hook the tarp up to that, maybe even to the windscreen or something. So you see, I've got it attached here to this suction cup. It's pretty, pretty strong, I have to say. So that's my center line. Now I've just got to do, just hook it off down below each side. So in case you've never seen it before, this is what I've got on the end of my cords. I've got this three mil Dyna cord. Very, very strong stuff. I've got a, carabiner and I've got a little toggle brake clip so that I can easily tighten tighten them 
very basic concept that I've just done myself. Got my massive 10 inch spikes. So let's hook this up. So you want a 90 degree, 45 degree angle. Sorry, not 90. Uh, against the side. That should do it here. Pull on the cord. It's one side. Perfect. Now let's do the other side. better while I was doing that Bruce was hiding under the car chilling you're gonna come and lie down next to me Bruce let me move that thermosel let me get that out of the way for you okay come and lie down you're gonna come and lie down good boy you're gonna chill out with me he likes being under the car because the car is so high that he can he can see 360 degrees and uh, it, it's like his safe spot under the car. So he does like it under there. So this is much better. Okay, so there's a road right here. Uh, it's not a busy road at all. This is a, a very rural spot that we're in. But what by having this tarp down this much, A, it gives me a bit of privacy and B, if it starts raining, um, it's all going to just shear off right down here. So I definitely won't get wet out here at all. This is covering the whole car. Um, it's not bad at all. What I might do is just send the drone up so you can see what the whole thing looks like. In fact, why don't I do that now so you can see what we're talking about. I think it's time to take Bruce for a walk. Do you want to go for a walk on the beach, Bruce? Should you go for a walk? Come on then. <laughs> yeah, taking Bruce for a walk. He needs to go on the beach, go and have a swim. Oh, I do like this beach. There's a little doggy. Hey, there's a little friend, Brucey. Hello. Come on, Bruce. Come on. <laughs> oh, Bruce, come on. Let's go. Leave it. Hello. Oh, he's tiny. <laughs> no, he's gone after Bruce. <laughs> I don't know where his owners are. They must be in that van. I haven't got a clue where they are, but it's very happy to see Bruce. <laughs> oh no! Zoom in a bit. <laughs> Bruce, what are you doing? You got a new friend. Hello. Come on, Brucey. Go, 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 go. 
He can't catch you. He's got teeny tiny little legs. Beautiful spot. I'm sure there's some rain coming. We shall see. For now, I'm just going to take him all the way up the beach and then come back to you later. Hey, Brucey. What are you doing? Is that a nice walk? Ah, oh, so I had a nice walk on the beach. We had to come back because it's just started to rain. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we get any pooling. I've actually put a pole up here that you can probably see. I've got loads of these. I've got four of them here. But I put this pole up just to let more light in, just so I can look out perfectly, not have anything loose, loose edges, basically. All the water is set up to flow directly down here to this side. Thank you, Brucey. Lovely kisses. Thank you. So away from this area here, all the way to the back there. Should be good, should be a good setup. I don't know where Brucey wants to lie down. He seems confused. Where do you want to lie down, Bruce? Do you want to come and lie down here? Where do you want to go? So what I could actually do is, to give myself more of a view, I could just move this out of the way for now. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So, with its big, <laughs> with its big brother, the Wawona 6, it has a, its own awning. You don't need a tarp. Um, and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but it's, it's a faff. It's a big tent. It's a really big tent. It's quite a challenge to set up. There's a lot to it, a lot of components. Um, but I do love that tent. This is the mini version the Wawona 4 and so far I'm absolutely loving it. I really am. The only thing I don't like about it is the stupid pegs it comes with but I've just come to accept those now. It is what it is. Um, I've got my own pegs that I'll be using in future. So yeah, I love this setup. There's no wind although I could do with a bit of a breeze <laughs> just because it's so humid. What are you doing over there Bruce? <laughs> There's there's a cliff edge right there. I hope it doesn't fall off. Um, so it looks good. It's almost time for his, you know what, D-I-N-N-E-R. Um, but we'll wait just a bit. And then I've got to get on with mine. And I'm doing something completely different this time uh, for me. Something a bit special. It's <laughs> just because I like easy. When I'm doing something like this, a car camping, glamping, or clamping with the car. Hey, you can't see him, but he's lying under the car now. Um, I want everything to be easy, super easy. So when EcoFlow sent me this battery pack, I wanted to test it to see how much it could handle what it could do and I'm keen to see if it will deal with what I'm going to throw at it yeah I'm not going to ruin the surprise uh, but I'm quite excited about this one just because I'm bringing the apartment an apartment to here look at this view it's just spectacular unfortunately because it's raining but it's bright it's so blinding on the camera. You probably can't see much out there, which is a shame. So I'm gonna chill. I've got another brew. This chair is amazing. It's got a cool bag in it as well. Look at that, nice and cold. I mean, I've got my fridge right here anyway. So it's a fridge freezer. So I've got two compartments in there because tonight what I'm cooking is frozen. I'm gonna sit, just look at the waves and just chill out and come back to you when it's time for dinner. Thanks for coming everybody. It's great to be back. Really good to be back. I've missed this.
I've missed coming out. So, and I've missed being able to talk to all you guys. Yeah, gives me a great reason to come out here. Thanks again, everybody. Oh, and thanks again for the treats and buy me a coffee. Everyone that's contributed, thank you so much. Oh, right, time for a coffee. Pretty desperate. I was falling asleep, looking at the waves, listening to that sound of just crashing waves. It rained quite a bit, um, but it's coming off the top well. You can see this top is treated. So the water just flows perfectly down there. I'm going to have to go around tonight and just tighten it up a bit. But it's, it's actually holding up pretty well. Just had someone, a family has pulled up and parked right next door. But facing the other way, luckily. I guess it's a popular spot. Right. Let's get a coffee on. So, got my little old... butane burner from when I lived in Japan, in Tokyo. The, uh, this is ancient now. My Uniflame. <laughs> Look at that thing. This is pretty old. But I found it the other day and I thought, wow, look at that. It still looks perfect. And it's so powerful. 4,200 yen. <laughs> But it's nice looking, look at it. Everything in Japan is made so well. It's got a nice wooden handle. Look at that. Just everything is made so well over there. It's so nice. Right, coffee. Ah, oh, right, it's got quite late now. It's like seven-ish. So first of all, we've got to sort out little Brucey's dinner. And for Bruce. For Bruce, we've got some Jimbo's dog food. Lamb and beef. Oh, he's gonna like this. Just mix a little bit of that in. He's not a big dog. 
don't want to overfeed him. And the older the dogs get, so Bruce is actually, what is he now? How old are you now, Bruce? 11? I think he's coming up to 11 years old. Yeah. Right, Bruce's dinner time. Dinner time, Bruce. Go on, mate. Right, while Bruce is having that, we're gonna have our, well, I'm gonna have my dinner. So, what I've got with me, <laughs> okay, now, I've taken this a little bit far. This is a bit extreme, but I've got, a Ninja double air fryer. This thing's a beast. Look at the size of it. Let me zoom in. Look at this. It's huge. Double capacity, double drawers. Most of the air fryers I've seen. Get you back out again. Most of the air fryers I've seen only have one drawer. So you've got to sort of take stuff out, keep it warm, blah, blah, blah. This thing is a double fryer with a sink mode. So it synchronizes its cooking. So I'm gonna plug this into the back of the EcoFlow. Turn the power on. Okay. Right, so this is actually charging at the moment my camera battery, this thing. So this is 24, I think it's 20, 2400 watts. Actually, I've got the book here. So it's actually, um, yeah, it's got 2400 watt total and a surge of 4600 watt. And the battery is actually 2016 watt hours. That's pretty huge. Right, now the mosquitoes are coming out. So I need to put this down where I'm standing because they're driving me crazy. Brucey, have you finished your dinner? Was that nice? You had a good dinner. Okay, so what I want to do is just heat it up first. So let's turn it on and keep an eye on this here and see what it does. Can you actually see it? I think you can. Yeah. So it will register as I do this. Let me just turn you around a bit so you can see there more clearly. Zoom you in. All right. I don't know if that's going to be in focus. I hope it is. But anyway, it's saying right now it's drawing 40, 30 something watts. That's because the fridge is plugged in. It's got 89% power left, 23 hours. When I turn this thing on, Okay, I wanna, I wanna warm up, preheat the fryer. So air fry 200 and air fry 200 and start. This thing has gone straight up to 1700, 1700. And it's saying it can run like this for one hour. I don't know whether it can, but we will see. So preheat. So obviously the thing's not gonna be cranking, the air fryer's not gonna be cranking the whole time. And what I'm cooking won't take an hour. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly this dives. I mean, 1700 watts, that's pretty extreme. Okay, let me zoom out a bit here. Right, so I'm preheating this. It only takes a couple of minutes to preheat. So let me get out my meal. And what we've got is Kumara fries, lovely Kumara fries. Let me zoom you out a bit more. 
Yeah, Kumara fries, or whatever you want to call them, sweet potato fries, and a couple of mince and cheese pies. And Bruce is right underneath me, hoping to capture anything that might fall off. <laughs> So I've got some oil because from experience, it's good just to coat the pies with a little bit of oil. If you're gonna use spray oil in a nonstick air fryer, don't spray it directly into it because the stuff that's in it, it's not good for the, um, it's not good for the nonstick. Okay, that should be preheated now. So let's stop it. Okay, and that has now immediately gone back up to 19 hours yeah okay so we want to put so the kumara fries take so 180 degrees centigrade so air fry 180 and that takes only eight minutes hmm okay i bet it takes longer than eight minutes it always takes longer than it says so i'll put it on for 10 Okay. All right. Okay, my fries are in. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to sink. And now we're going to do number two, and we're going to do the pies. Now, the pies, I will, I should bake them really. So I'll put it on to bake. Um, actually, no, I won't. I'll do air fry and see if I can get away with it. 200, we'll say 180. Okay, synchronized. So I press the sync button. And when I press start, they'll both finish at the same time. There you go. So if I show you there, you can just see, if I move around here, can you make that out? It's saying hold here, and it's saying 19 minutes here. And then if we look at what's going on in the actual power supply, let me just pan down. Can you make that out? So we've got 14, 14 hours left. Oh, now it's gone to two hours, one hour. So when the, when it actually kicks in, it, uh, it draws about 1600, 1700. So I've got running off there now, the air fryer, and I've got my fridge running off it as well. So it will be interesting to see how much power is left on the EcoFlow at the end of this. And I'm hoping there'll be enough to do what I need to do for breakfast as well. So I'll come back to you when this is cooked. Four three, two, one, and it's done. Okay, so we'll shut that off. It's got cold. All right, so there's lots of steam coming out the back. I think we're good to go. Kumara chips and mince pies. So let's see what we're talking about here. Check the chips. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. My gosh, I'm so hungry. Chips, good. Pies, oh. The pies are perfect. Look at that. They're absolutely perfect. Wow. I had no doubt.
So even after all that, what was that, 20 odd minutes or so? That's pretty amazing. Right, let's get some salt and pepper on. Bit of salt. Bit of pepper. And some Tabasco. Actually, you know who used Tabasco recently? Corporal's Corner, Sean Kelly. Tabasco on the pies here. Oh, I'm ready to feast. And there we have it. Air fried pies with Kumara chips. Doesn't get much better. I need a beer. So while I'm eating this, I think we'll get Bruce a treat. All right, another treat for Bruce. There you go, Brucey. Go on then. Come on, you can take it. Good boy. <laughs> oh, right, dinner time. Oh, I'm so hungry. I am happy now. Cheers, everybody. I can hear Bruce eating his bone under the car. And it's beautiful out here. It's quite a family place, this. Oh, let me move forward. Because it's right by the beach. It's not far from the local town, half an hour. So, and it's very accessible. So it does get busy. I mean, I've been here before and there's been no one around. Um, you know, winter and stuff like that, but at this time of year, there's people around. Beggars can't be choosers. Right, let's tuck in, let's have some pie. It's crispy, that's a good sign. Oh, it's absolutely smells delicious. And it also it seems to be very hot. Oh my word, honestly. This, this is clamping. It's gotta be the easiest meal with the least mess. I've ever made on a camping trip. That has turned out to taste so good. Wow.
You know what I need to do in there next? Burgers and chips. And then fish and chips. <laughs> Just everything. Yeah, I need to do burgers and chips. <clears throat> because that was so easy. And I love burgers. Put some decent burgers in the air fryer. I think we're laughing. You know what I forgot? I forgot. I forgot Bruce's collar. The LED one. So I won't be able to spot him. Oh, hey, Brucey. Did you have your treat? Was it nice? Good boy. Right, I'm going to finish eating this. And I'll bring you all back for cigar time. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Welcome back, everybody. Oh, let's just move the microphone. That meal was amazing. That was so delicious. Oh, the, the crust of the pie, oh, just everything about it was delicious. The kumara, fries, everything. So, temperature has dropped. It's a bit chilly now. Yeah. But you know what time it is? It's cigar time. I'm going for a Monte Cristo number four. Okay, we're lit. And it shouldn't go out now because it's been sort of superheated.
meteorite. Ah. Mm. In my cool bag, I have another near bit. And I think you can see, I don't know if you can see Bruce, he's just down here. Ah. Wow. Cheers, everybody. Thanks so much for coming on. <laughs> I'm loving this camp. I was so desperate to get out, honestly. Been isolated at home <sighs> for a week. Wasn't allowed to leave, and before that, couldn't go anywhere. <clears throat> First thing I want to do, though, is give a shout out and a thank you to Corporal Sean Kelly over at Corporal's Corner. I've been following him for years, and uh, we've just had a couple of little chats on Instagram before, just about YouTube stuff. And always been polite, super sharp guy, very business-like, uh, very professional. And out of nowhere, I had no idea, he sent me a message saying, hey, by the way, watch my video this Sunday. Which was kind of strange, because I always watch anyway. <laughs> So I said, sure, no problem. Is it going to be a good one? And he gave me a shout out. And um, I suddenly got a whole new load of subscribers from his channel. It, you know, I've always given shout outs and paid it forward to smaller channels, bigger channels even, just when I like them. That was very nice of him. So, um, Corporal's Corner, Sean. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Really meant a lot. Thank you. I was really touched by that. And then you gave me a second one the week after, through no fault of your own, because YouTube messing with the videos. <clears throat> but um, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm having a puff for you. So, yeah, I hadn't posted a video for a month. <clears throat> I'm sorry about having to do that, by the way. Again, it's just because I've got over COVID. But yeah, so obviously I couldn't for the last week because I had COVID. And before that, there was just a lot going on. Um, I also just wasn't in the right frame of mind. So I know I've got, what have I got now? 98, 99,000 subscribers. So a lot of you will have seen my videos over the last year. We started a year ago. Um, just a few weeks before this, a year ago, I just got back from the UK. I was in the UK. Uh, we're looking after my father, my dad, um, because he had cancer and COPD. I live in New Zealand. My dad lived in uh, the UK. And uh, I was there six months looking after him. And it got to the point where I'd been there so long, I had to get back to New Zealand. I had to get back home. Um, my wife needed me, my son needed me, and I had a brother here who said, hey, you know what, you come back, I'll go and continue looking after him. Anyway, I got, a, I got COVID <laughs> two weeks before coming back, which was all a bit of a nightmare. But anyway, I managed to get back. And then I guess what, uh, I got back um, just before my birthday, um, which was uh, towards the end of February, mid-February. And then uh, my dad died. Um, I did get to say goodbye to him um, on Zoom. Uh, my brother set up, but my, dad, my brother was with him. <clears throat> and it was a very traumatic um, time for me, yeah. So, the anniversary of his death was um, a few weeks ago. And uh, I really wanted to go camping. I really, I packed. Sorry. So, um, I 
was all packed to go. I just couldn't. Hit me pretty hard. Hit me pretty hard. Just kept thinking uh, what I've lost. It's such a great man. That, you know, that guide, that's someone who you can always call. That's when you realize it's all down to you now. It's no one else. So I was very down. Kept wanting to go. And I just kept thinking of my dad and I just couldn't do it. So that's why. That's, that's why I couldn't go camping. That's why you haven't heard from me for a while. Yeah, his name is Edward, Edward Patrick. Very honorable man. Do anything for anyone. Yeah, great guy, sorely missed. So dad, to you, miss you a lot. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's why I'm being around. But a lot has happened while I've been gone. Now, in my last video, that was the, uh, oh, it's raining. I know the microphone's not picking it up because the sound of the waves, but it, it's raining. It's actually been raining on and off since we got here. I don't think it's meant to be heavy rain. Of course, he has to lie out in it. He can't help himself. Yeah, so um, my last video, which I think was the blue pop-up tent. You know what, I can't remember what my last one, my last one was. Oh, you know what it, yeah, you know what? I can't even remember, <laughs> it was that long ago. Anyway, someone left a comment saying, oh, this, uh, this aged a little bit too well. And it was a reference that I made about um, the fact that I thought we might be going to war. Or that there would be a war, I should say. And yeah, it turns out there is, so, you know, you all know what's going on. And I brought it up in uh, relation to supply chain crisis and cost of everything rising. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, it, it happened, and what a shock. I know we're all shocked. So to everyone who's out there suffering right now, I think you know who I mean. Um, you are my thoughts. And I just really hope everything is over soon and we can get back to some peace. Yes, so there's that. Inflation, fuel costs, wow. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to um, do the air fryer thing and the air power everything by electricity was because sort of like not use as much gas. I know I did the kettle on the gas. It's because I haven't got an electric kettle that I could have brought with me, a small one. but maybe I'll do that in future. But uh, New Zealand here, we get all our gas locally anyway. We've got local gas fields. So it's not imported. So we're quite lucky there. Uh, obviously gasoline is imported and boy oh boy have the prices skyrocketed. And the New Zealand government has just uh, cut the fuel tax. Um, probably by not enough and it probably won't help 
the people that really need it the most as much as it needs to. Um, so something's got to give with the taxation system on fuel because it's just not working the way it is. And we're not ready. This country particularly is not ready to transition to electric vehicles. There are no charges anywhere. They're ridiculously expensive and New Zealand terrain does not go well with EVs. But uh, if you look at the average car that's on the road here, people can't afford an EV, no way. It's not a rich country. And even if you could, where are we gonna get these EVs from? The waiting list now is, it, it, is months and months and months and probably years if everybody starts ordering them and they're already struggling to get the parts for the cars so how is this all going to work we have jumped the gun on this net zero thing and you know you can say what you want you can you can say no no, no we're just going to do it we've got to find a way we've got to do it at some point it doesn't mean you're going to find a way straight away so they need to give up on all this and let it happen more slowly, more naturally, uh, and not punish the people that can't afford to do it. It just doesn't seem fair to me. Ah, uh, what else has happened? Ah, so we're about to, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't jinx it, but we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers now. I think I'm at 98 something, 99, somewhere around there when this video comes out. So that's very exciting and I have something special planned for that. Um, so I can't wait for that to happen, that would be great. You get your silver play button, which would be fantastic. I'm trying to think of all the comments that I get. Now the thing is, I get each video gets like a thousand comments. It's impossible for me to read them all. It just is. YouTube don't make it easy. They just don't. Um, so it's, you, you can't differentiate. The only way you can differentiate is if you're a member. And we get a tool that shows us if members have made comments. Otherwise, they're all bundled in together. And if you comment on something where you've commented before, someone else has commented, I don't see it at all. It's, it's so difficult. And uh, so I have got members, thank you for joining. And I do see those comments quite easily and I can respond to those quite easily. So thank you again uh, for people who have done that. Ah, oh. and while we're at it, I've been using, okay. So I've been using uh, this site called Skillshare because I wanted to get some proper advice about how to use Final Cut Pro to do this video editing. And um, they actually reached out to me and asked if uh, they could sponsor some videos uh, where I discussed Skillshare and I was like, okay, fine. So I wanted to talk about what I do with Skillshare and how it works for me. So let me just give you this quick message because I want to also uh, give a shout out to the one guy that I actually follow that got me um, to my next level on Final Cut Pro. So let me just run this footage for you just so you can see what I'm talking about for Skillshare. So after a few months of uh, doing my YouTube channel, I was struggling a little bit with how to use Final Cut Pro and other features um, of video editing and general, you know, when to use B-roll, when not to and stuff like that. So I went on to Skillshare and Skillshare is uh, a, a collaboration of not educators, but people who have got experience with a vast array of topics. And I typed in uh, Final Cut Pro and lo and behold, there was um, a fantastic, as it turns out, uh, video uh, regarding uh, Final Cut Pro for beginners upwards by Ali Abdal. And it was everything I was looking for. And you, the perfect thing about this was you could break it down from beginner to, you know, basically very good. 
and the ins and outs, how to do B-roll, how to assemble everything, uh, all the keyboard shortcuts, how to add titles, how to crop, um, add timestamps, many things, animations, etc. And I must have watched this video now, I don't know, 50 times. And thanks to him, I have become way better at using Final Cut Pro. And it's not just Final Cut Pro, obviously there's many things out there, even in my field of what I'm doing YouTube videos about, of camping. And it's just an incredible resource where most people would look to YouTube for these things. Skillshare actually has them all there and you don't really have to hunt around for everything that you need. So if you check out Skillshare, go to AB Camping. I've got the code in the description uh, to get your one month uh, trial period and then see about membership. Um, it's a, a flat fee per month could be the best decision you've made in your life if you're looking for certain topics and you're stuck. The resources available on there are incredible. The amount of options and classes that are there are incredible. Uh, from film and video to photography, music, business, you name it, it's all on there. It's your one-stop resource. So check the description, click on the link to take you there and see what's there that might interest you or that you've been looking for and that you need help with. So thanks for looking at that. As you can see, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing product. And if you uh, look in the description, there's a discount code there that you can use, uh, AB Camping, um, to get you a discount and your trial. So please, go and check out Skillshare if there's anything you need to learn. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. I think the wind burnt this all on one side. I should have rotated it more. So, the tent. Well, I'll be honest, I haven't actually used it yet. <laughs> I haven't even, all I've done is been in, put stuff in there, and I've gone in a couple of times and that's it but I haven't sat in there I haven't done anything in there I haven't slept in there yet so I'll have to report on the tent in the morning um, it has rained on and off not heavy though um, there might be some heavy rain in the middle of the night who knows at this location anything can happen so I'll definitely report back and see if there's any leaks or anything but knowing what I know about north face tents they don't leak the seam ceiling it looks really good uh, so, so far the only thing I don't like are the pegs. Other than that, I haven't really found anything that I don't, don't like on this. So, will this be my new favourite tent? Better than the Wawona 6. The Wawona 6 is a palace though. But, for little old me and Bruce, the Wawona 6 is ridiculous overkill. Mm, got smoke in the camera, sorry. I mean, some would say that even this Wawona 4 is ridiculous overkill for just me and Bruce. But we're doing clamping, car clamping. So I want all of that extra space and luxuriousness and everything else. And I want this big porch area to sit out like I'm doing now, which is awesome. Mm. Somebody's back. Hey, Brucey. What's up? Hey? Thirsty. He's having a drink. So, oh, there's so many other things, but you know what? I don't want to talk about politics and I don't want to talk about current events anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. I just want to listen to that sound of the uh, the waves and enjoy my cigar now I've tied Bruce up so he's actually tied to the table here because there are people nearby and I haven't got his collar with him his LED collar so I can't see where he is um, 
so I need to keep him tied up. And he's settled. He's settled down here under the car, so he's fine. Yeah, so that's it really. An easy peasy one. I didn't, yeah, not too much to talk about. Just because the stuff that's going on out there is so depressing that I don't think there is anything fun out there at the moment. So we've got to all go camping and get outdoors. And for the Northern Hemisphere guys, you're all coming into spring now. So I hope you're, you've got your gear ready, checked it all, opened it all up, made sure that the seams are all, the seam sealant's all working, get your spare seam sealant ready. <clears throat> Make sure there's no mold in anything. You don't want to open up that tent and it falls to pieces. And if, you've, if you're waiting for stuff, uh, that you've ordered ages ago, let me know. I'd be interested to hear what you've been waiting for that you just can't get. Someone made a comment the other day is, what did I miss? Why has bread gone up? Um, well, the, the biggest supplier of wheat, I think combined is Russia and Ukraine. So that's why. So flour is gonna go up this year, it just is. There's nothing we can do about it. But yeah, any other things, electronics or whatever. I, oh, I just got an email from Starlink. Now, luckily I've already got one, but they're raising the price of the dish, the dishy. So if you've got a deposit on one, it goes up. I think it went up 50, 60, was it 70 bucks? And if you haven't got a deposit, if you're brand new, then it's gone up even more. Existing subscribers, we've already got the dish, so we don't have to pay any more. But they're saying it's because of supply chain issues. So they've got to charge. I guess Elon can't afford it. <laughs> Poor Elon. We've got to help him out. He's struggling. He's struggling. Oh, and I just started playing. Oh, what the hell is it called? The game on the New York Times. Is it Wordle? Wordle? I don't know. I like that. I'm only on my fifth day, but I've got all five so far. In fact, I got one <laughs> first time guess. That was lucky. Um, but generally, I'm around three or four. I've had one five. So I've had a one, two, Oh, no, I haven't had a two. I've had a one, two threes, a four and a five. I don't know how that compares, but I like it. Yeah, it's a good, good game. Makes you think. So, what I'm gonna do is chill with my cigar, have my brews. I've got another one here in the cool bag. Listen to the rain. There's no way I could get the camera to pick up the sound of this rain um, because this, the waves are so strong. Um, I don't even know if it would show up on camera. I've got nothing, no way of lighting up the rain out there to make you, you have to have the, the light behind the rain for you to see it. It's a big faff and it means getting wet. So I'm not gonna do that. But you're just gonna have to trust me, it's raining and I'm bone dry but we will see uh, in the morning how it is. All right, everybody, I'll bring you back for bedtime. Well, we're all tucked in. Bruce is happy, he's on his bed, very cozy. I've just got the little, his little microfiber towel on him just because he was a little bit wet. And I love this bed, this cot. It's so comfy. It's nice being off the floor. Just everything about it is nice. Very comfortable. Got my quilt. Usually this is what I take up the top of the mountains, but it is chilly. But this is good down to minus 12. It's certainly not going to need this at all. 
Um, but it is chilly. It's quite a drafty tent, but what I should say is it's good airflow, good ventilation. Yeah, tons of space in here, loads of space. I could open this flap here a little bit. If I needed more ventilation, I could open this down to about here. Uh, and rain wouldn't get in anyway, um, because there's an overhead for the rain fly outside. But I don't need to. There's ventilation here and here, and two vents at the front as well. Lots of pockets. There's pockets everywhere. Loads of pockets. Lots of room. Oh, well, I own a four. This might be my new favorite tent, as long as it doesn't leak. Now, if you can hear, I don't know if you can hear the rain. It is raining, and it's getting heavier. So I'm assuming it's going to start chucking down. Look how tired he is. He's already gone to sleep. Look at that. His eyes are closed. It's so easy for him. Just, just like that. He's had a long day. He's very excited. He's had a good play on the beach. And that's it. And he's not going to move now until tomorrow morning. That's it. So last time he was on that, it was actually the Oz Trail tent. And it leaked. It was a pop-up, another type of pop-up tent, instant tent, and it leaked. We didn't know until the morning, and it dripped and it made my clothes wet, and it dripped all over him as well on the corner of his bed. Hopefully, no repeat of that. North Face know how to make good gear. I am liking this tent. There's a lot of space, and these waves are so loud. It's amazing. All right, everybody. Exhausting, that's right. He's opened his eyes for that. It's bedtime. I'll catch you all in the morning. Good night, everybody.
you too. Good morning. 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 Stay down there. You're not coming up. Come on. <laughs> morning. 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 Morning, everybody. Oh, oh. I slept well. Oh, control Brucey. Oh my gosh, he's a nightmare in the morning. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's so much fun. He slept well. Oh, he's bed. He's very cozy. Now I see we've had some cooling. Oh, there, just a little bit. So I've got to go out and knock that off. <laughs> oh, Bruce, for God's sake. Okay. All right, I've got to get up. I've got to get Bruce up and get some breakfast. He's desperate to go out. And he's let him out and going pee. I know, it's a new day. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, everybody, come back to your room. Outside, get a coffee. Uh, right, got to get Bruce's breakfast. hungry. So I made a mistake on my fridge freezer. I had it cranking all night at minus 18, uh, which was a bit silly because it sucked a whole load of juice. So there's only 38% left. Hopefully that's enough to do what I need to do for breakfast though. Um, but yeah, that's been running as a full fridge freezer at minus 18 all night which just was not necessary at all. In fact, his food is almost frozen. That's how cold it was. Even going through to the section next to it, it turned it into zero almost. some of his dry food in with that. And he's gonna be a happy boy. Now, we're probably gonna to have to tie him up this morning because there is a family there right next to us. What? A ways over. But if they start having breakfast or something, he might go and pester them. There's nothing worse than being having a dog coming and pestering you. Someone else's dog. So I'm gonna feed him down here. Come on then, Brucey. There you go. Putting the dry food in with his wet food slows him down a bit, which is good. Well, that was good, wasn't it? 
Knocked that straight over. <laughs> it's morning. It's early. Uh, that's why you don't do this stuff in a normal car. You've got something like this. Need to make this more stable. There you go. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Brain's not firing completely at the moment. Let's chuck a coffee bag in there. <laughs> oh dear. Beautiful out there. Gotta turn this around and show you what I'm looking at. So Bruce is eating grass. Well, he stopped eating grass now because I said his name. And they do that to get fiber when they're a bit constipated, get things flowing. Or sometimes if they feel a bit sick. It's amazing, they know. They know what to do to sort themselves out. And please don't comment, your dog's eating grass because he's hungry. He's just eaten that much food. He's not hungry. So if you see your dog eating grass, then just let them. It's natural. Getting some fiber, pushing some stuff through. They take care of themselves. I don't need you managing them every five seconds. <sighs> so the tent, now I've had a chance to actually spend the night in it. What do I think? I like it. It's a good tent. It's airy, it's got a lot of ventilation, spacious, easy to set up. And that was really easy to set up. Um, waterproof, it did pool on the top, but that's because I've got the tarp pulling down on the top here. If I didn't have the tarp there, uh, then I could tighten all this up more, then it wouldn't pool. Um, so that's purely because of the tarp. 
Also, all the water from the tarp was coming back there as well, trapping it. So it did rain all night. So it did well. It's bone dry in there. Loads of room for me and Bruce and all our other gear. The vestibule size is good. I had, I had my fridge freezer and battery pack, everything out here in the vestibule. Um, zipped up and that was fine. So it's quite a lot of space. If it was raining, you could actually, because of the way this door is designed, uh, it's got Velcro straps. The only thing you can't do is partially roll it down. You have to have it all the way down. I guess you could find a way of having it partially way down if it was raining uh, to say here and then find a way just to hook it back up inside of itself, something like that. If you didn't have a tarp or you couldn't be bothered with the tarp, then it'd be fine. But it's so big anyway, if it was raining, you wouldn't feel claustrophobic. It's just a matter of seeing out. You do want to see out. So, yeah. If you could have this door just partially way down, that would be great. You just got to find a way to roll the rest up and then just sort of stick it to itself. I'm sure there would be a way to work that out. You might have to do some modifications to it, but it would be worth it, I tell you because it's, it's a good tent, and not everybody wants to carry a tarp and deal with this faff. Tarps are faff, yeah. And they're not brilliant in the wind. It was quite windy last night. This did okay. Um, but that's because I've got the poles. I'm used to this spot, and it's a good tarp. He's not running off at all now. Now he's had his breakfast and he's content. He's quite happy just to sit here, look out at the view. I might have to take him for a walk. In fact, I will take him for a walk. You want to walk? Do you want to go for a walk on the beach? He's so sandy. His, his dog bed's covered in sand. Anne's going to kill me. He always comes back a mess. A bit itchy. Oh, you've got your thick coat. All right, so I'm gonna finish my coffee and then uh, take him for a walk. Right, Bruce has had a walk. He's happy. He's had his food, now it's my turn. So, what are we doing for a treat for breakfast? Now, what I might actually do is, because it looks quite dark in the camera. Ah, it might be okay. Right, so what are we doing? Oh. So we've got the air fryer. I'm using that again. But I've also got a waffle maker. That's right. Instead of pancakes, we're doing waffles. And in the air fryer, I'm doing bacon. So this is, what is this? This is, so the waffle maker is 750 to 900 watts. And I think this is 1600 watts the air fryer so putting them together is going to put it close to its max because i've got the fridge plugged in as well so this should be interesting and bearing in mind i've only got 37 percent left because <laughs> i screwed up and had the fridge freezer running on full blast which wasn't clever okay so let's get this all plugged in.
All right, so what we need to do is get preheat the air fryer. And I'm only using one this time. So we're gonna do air fry um, 200, yeah. And we'll just do it for three minutes just to warm it up. Let's get that cranking. And let's crank the waffle maker. Get that heated up as well. I'm gonna put that on level five. So I'm showing a draw of 2,366 watts. Now at this rate, there's only 16 minutes left, it's saying. <laughs> so, yeah, I screwed up with the fridge freezer. That's not EcoFlow's fault at all. I had this thing cranking just far too much overnight. Oh, I've got a juice. And I've got my bacon. Yeah, so what I need to do is get the bacon in quickly because that's probably going to be the biggest draw of the whole thing. Okay, got some lovely Manuka smoked streaky bacon here. Eh, that's long enough. Okay, let's stop that. Let's put my bacon in. It's hot already. Put a couple of pieces in for Brucey as well. All right, let's change the time. I reckon that will just take 10 minutes at 200, start. Okay, that's cranking. Okay, the fans, the fans have just come on, on the EcoFlow. Don't know if you can hear that. So it's cranking hard now. Yeah, so 14 minutes left at this charge and there's 2,000, it's pulling 2,350 watts. So it's really cranking. Let me lift you up a bit. Yeah, so that's really going for it. And the fans are, yeah, a lot of air being sucked through. I guess it gets quite hot, quite warm on the top. There's a heat sink there. All right, so while that's doing thing, I can smell the bacon now already. So put that back in the fridge. So yeah, just to remind you, there would be a lot more, a lot more left. I'd say I'd have 60, 70% left if I hadn't left the freezer on all night at minus 18. <coughs> that was silly. Hey ho. I've had this sitting out all night as well. So it's quite cool, it was quite cool overnight. So I don't know if that affects the life of the battery, but I doubt it. So now it says 12 minutes, 29%. And we're at it, it's almost at its limit. So its limit is 2600 for continuous flow. And, um, oh there, so something's just switched off. So the air fryer has just stopped because it's at temperature now, you see. So now it's gone up to 35 minutes and it's only 800 watt draw. So the 800 watts is the waffle maker. So this EcoFlow Max is, it's actually got a lot of charge because the air fryer doesn't stay on permanently. Oh there, it's just kicked in again. 
So yeah, I can monitor it and you can see it. There is an app as well that you can use to monitor the EcoFlow uh, battery. Um, I just choose not to use it because this is enough for me, the display up here. But you can fine tune all the settings uh, from the app, which is pretty cool, I have to say. Right, where are we at with the waffles? Okay, so I'm waiting for the ready light to come on. It will beep. When it beeps, I'm good to go. Wow, it's, this is, the, the bacon is cranking away. You can really smell it, very strong. Let me just uh, give it a little bit of a flip. So this thing, I got this just locally, the Ninja dual air fryer. This thing is amazing. It's got bake, dehydrate, reheat, roast, air fry, Max Crisp. Hmm. Max Crisp probably uses quite a lot of energy, but Max Crisp would be quite good with the bacon, I reckon. You can see all the moisture coming out at the back, all the steam. Because bacon's got so much water in it. doing a great job. Come on, I need this waffle maker to hurry up because I've only got 11 minutes left. 25%. 10 minutes left. Oh, there you go, it's beeping. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right, so now we're cranking both and we're gonna wait for this to beep again, for the waffle maker to say that the waffles are ready. I've got all sorts of steams and smells and going on. But this thing's jumped up to 16 minutes now. So interesting. Something, the air fryer is drawing now only half power. Yeah, so it's not constantly cranking at full pelt. And now they've both switched off because they're both at temperature. And so now I've got five hours left. <laughs> so this thing's working. If you don't have to crank constantly, actually, my, this thing will last forever and ever and ever. Right, I'm only going to do one waffle, so I'm going to put my mix back in the fridge. Ah. <sighs> got to say I'm very excited because I've never done it this luxurious before all right so we've got four minutes left on this and I reckon the waffles we've got about another few minutes so they've both kicked in again we've got 10 minutes left okay I'll bring you back when this beeps Okay, so the waffles are ready, just beat. So we'll turn that off. Okay, we've got our waffles. Let's see how we're doing on the bacon. Oh, the bacon is actually pretty much done. Give it another couple of minutes. So where are we at? We're 18% left. Um, and the waffles are done now. So at this drawer, 1500, it's got 11 minutes left. Oh, look at my waffles. It might not have put enough mixture in. They came out well, or it came out well. Nice waffle, check it out. And what do we do with waffles? We put loads of maple syrup on. Oh yeah, lashings of maple syrup. <laughs> so, this is 30 seconds left on the bacon. I, it worked. Even with my screw up of having the freezer running all night, 
and drawing way too much power off this thing all night. And don't forget it ran all day, most of yesterday as well. Um, it's still got 17% left. No problem at all. It still says it's got 11 minutes at this 1500, uh, so now 22 hours. <coughs> okay, so this is finished. Turn that off. So where's that left me? 17%, seven hours <coughs> of charge left. Awesome. And there's my lovely bacon. Wow. I think quite possibly the most successful breakfast and dinner combo I've ever done. <laughs> now it's time to tuck in. Ah, <sighs> what do you think, Brucey? Maybe Brucey gets a piece of bacon. What do you think? A piece of bacon for Brucey? Here you go. Come on then. Sit. Here. Good boy. Go on then. Here you go, Brucey. You can have it. Ooh. <laughs> bon appetit, everybody. Waffles and bacon. Mm. Wow. If you haven't had it before, try air fried bacon. Very crispy. Mmm. Oh. That is so good. I'll bring you back after I finished it. Oh, I'm stuffed. That was delicious. That really was delicious. Hey, Bruce had a couple of pieces of bacon as well. Okay, so I think it's time for me to pack up. Gotta say, very impressed with the EcoFlow. Um, it coped so well, and there's still plenty of charge left in it. And that was the best breakfast I think I've had so far on any of these trips. Yeah, without a doubt, because it was the easiest and so tasty. Usually I've got a mess. Oh, that was just so good. Wasn't it, Brucey? You liked your bacon, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. 
yeah, so all good. Tent is great. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, the tarp set up, I think this is the most successful camp I've had. Yeah, I've enjoyed this one a lot. Nice walks by the beach, beautiful sounds of the waves. Bit of rain, actually there was a lot of rain last night, it rained all night. And packing up in the dry, hopefully before it starts raining. All right, so Brucey, we've got to pack up, so let's get on with it. Well, that's it, all packed up. It was a great camp. I really enjoyed this one. Um, the, this is a, 
not a busy spot, but there are a few people around. You'll have seen there was a motorbike and had a family there earlier, but it's nice. It's still, you're only talking about what? Over the whole time I've been here, I've seen maybe six people, seven people on a spot like this. Incredible. And what a spot is so beautiful here. The waves just sound incredible. And it's, last night I, uh, I filmed some of the rain with the, uh, the sound of the waves. So I, I put that in the video. Um, it was a few minutes long, I think. And it would just been black. But just so you could get the feeling of what it was like when we went to bed, just that sound it was so stunning. So once again, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank EcoFlow for the battery pack. That was amazing, amazing. I'm going to be taking that on every car camp trip now, definitely. So much power, incredible. And I've got to come up with new ideas to use it as well. I think Anne would actually enjoy coming on a camp with that one because then she could use a hairdryer. <laughs> I wonder if I can get a hot working shower working with it. That would be pretty cool, yeah. Bruce had a great time. Thank you everyone for all the treats for Bruce and for myself at Buy Me A Coffee. We really appreciate them. Didn't you, Brucey, hey? You got lovely dog food, you got some fantastic treats. Yeah, happy boy. It's a shame I forgot his LED collar, but I couldn't have him running around last night anyway with this family here. And I'm getting, gonna get better, gonna get fit again. It took it out of me a bit, the COVID, um, but I will push on. Hopefully next week, the next video will be me camping either by the river or up on the tops, probably by the river to start with, because that's a bit of a walk in as well. So more wild camping coming up and uh, I can't wait, can't wait. Thanks so much for everyone for coming and we'll see you on the next time. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye. Ready to go home, Brucey? Yeah? Okay. Bye, everybody.